What is up everybody? Random Random Man here bringing you my review for the 2016 version of The Magnificent Seven. Now the plot takes place in a mining town called Rose Creek where a corrupt industrialist named Bartholomew Bogue, played by Peter Skarsgård, takes it over. And after killing a man whose wife is still alive, played by Haley Bennett, she hires a group of seven ragtag heroes to take back the town. Going into this movie, I honestly didn't know what to expect while I also knew what to expect. I do know that this is a remake of a remake as The Magnificent Seven is based on the 1960 film of the same name, which in turn was a remake of the 1954 film Seven Samurai directed by the legendary Akira Kurosawa. Now I have never seen either one of those films. I know I should given how I am a fan of cinema and those are two classics, but I was interested in the 2016 version mainly because of the director and the cast that was assembled in this movie. With the cast of characters, I can definitely say that they are among the best parts of the movie. Denzel Washington plays this really, really suave cowboy dressed all in black and really has a stance for himself. He plays a badass here like he has done in the past, as does Chris Pratt as another cowboy or really a gambler who is teaming up with Washington's character. He's basically Chris Pratt. We all love Chris Pratt for what he does and his Chris Pratt ways. And I thought a lot of what he did in this movie made me really gravitate towards him like I have done in past films with him. The other five members of The Magnificent Seven also do as great of jobs as Washington and Pratt do. We also have Ethan Hawke, Vincent D'Onofrio, Byung Hung Lee, Martin Sensmere, and Manuel Garcia Rulfo. Everyone in this movie is just a complete badass. I also have to give a special mention to Haley Bennett who does play that widow once again who wants revenge on Peter Skarsgård's character and hires these seven men. She does a really nice job here even for what she is given. The writing in this movie is paper thin. That's my biggest problem with this movie. Again, I haven't seen Seven Samurai or the original Magnificent Seven, so I can't comment on how this does as a reimagining of that story, but I can definitely say that this type of story has been done before again and again and again throughout many westerns. Some evil bad guy takes over a town or population and there's a group of ragtag heroes that have to stop him. This has been done too many times for me to count and when it's done here we get a lot of credibility and care for these characters but they're also really underdeveloped to me. Same with the villain. Peter Skarsgård never intimidated me that much other than when he's first introduced in the beginning of the movie but other than that he hardly has a looming presence in this movie until the very end. The pacing also threw me off a bit at times. This movie runs at about 2 hours and 15 minutes which I felt was a little long especially towards the end as the final half hour of this movie really is just a long battle sequence. However, I will say that along with the big strength we have with our ensemble members of the Magnificent Seven, we also get some very focused direction from director Antoine Fuqua. I've been a fan of this guy's work for a while. He's of course done Training Day, also starring Denzel Washington and Ethan Hawke. More recently, he has directed Olympus Has Fallen, The Equalizer, and Southpaw, all of which I've really enjoyed. And in this movie, he delivers some more badass action. It's really explosive fun. There is just copious amounts of ammunition flying everywhere, people getting shot. This is a pretty violent movie for a PG-13, but I think it is all handled extremely well. The movie has some gorgeous cinematography and how the action is shot. The overall look of this film with the production design and even the costumes really made you feel like you were in the 1870s when this movie was supposed to be taking place. I also have to give a special mention to the original score for this movie as sadly this was the last movie that the late great James Horner worked on before he passed away last year. However, 
His friend Simon Franklin did take over and finished up the score for Horner. And I would say that this movie sounded like a Western through and through. There were some beats throughout this movie that I recognized were some of Horner's snippets as a lot of his scores in his filmography are just so iconic that I really felt that a lot of care and respect was done to Horner's legacy with this movie. All in all, this movie certainly delivers some entertainingly fun Western thrills. Do I think that it is among the best Western films that we have gotten in recent memory? No. We have gotten a bit of a resurgence within films in the Western genre, what with Quentin Tarantino's own Django Unchained and The Hateful Eight. Do I think this movie is as good as those films? No. Even comparing it to other westerns of sorts like Alejandro González Iñárritu's The Revenant and even Hell or High Water from this year, that was more of a modern western and is currently still my favorite movie of the year so far. The Magnificent Seven doesn't quite hold a candle up to those four films, but on its own, what with Antoine Fuqua directing the action that is worth the price of admission, the ensemble cast giving great performances and showing that they really enjoyed themselves within this filmmaking process, and whatever else the movie has in looking like a pure Western. I think that if you aren't a big fan of Westerns and you want to get into more of them, this is a nice intro of sorts to get into the genre. I recommend it. My final verdict for The Magnificent Seven is three and a half out of five stars. Or, if you want to convert my score out of ten, seven out of ten. Get it? Because Seven, The Magnificent Seven, that's the title of this movie. Ugh, why do I even try? <laughs> anyway, Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of The Magnificent Seven, subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.